Hi everyone, this is Christine from Mail Something Pretty, and I'm going to make this happy card today. Um, my team and I are doing a card swap, and so this is the card that I'm going to make them. And um, I'll make each the same card, and then I'll get um, cards from them, and so we'll have lots of samples, and I'll share them on my blog. But I just thought that it was fun and happy. Um, and really, it could be obviously a birthday, cue the confetti, but I also thought it could be a fun baby card or even um, you could stretch it a little bit for retirement or some other reason for celebration. So I wanted to show you how I made it. It features the, I don't know if you can see, the uh, raised letters on the foam sheets. So I wanted to show you how to do that. And I also want to show you, um, we're going to use a stamparatus and I'm going to show you the hinge technique, which is cool. Um, but first, let me just show you um, in the catalog I used um, for the cue, the confetti, and the stripes from Pattern Play. And then I used the letters, um, which I haven't, I'm starting to put on a, a magnetic board, but I kind of like this too because it has the outlines of the letters. So we'll see if which way I keep it. Um, but the playful alphabet um, is also in this suite. So if you get both the uh, stamp set and the letters, it's a bundle and it saves you 10%. Um, but I just wanted to show you in the catalog, there's some fun samples and there's fun paper that goes with it. Okay. Alrighty. Oops. Get that. Okay. So like I said, we're going to use the Stamparatus and... Um, when you get your Stamparatus, you get two clear plates, you get two magnets, and those are actually located on the back. There's little storage places for them here. You do not want them to come together because they can, um, they're really strong and they can, um, break. But you can order extra ones. Um, and then you get, so you get this little foam pad and then this is your base. I added on this washi tape because I like to know, I'll show you in a minute, um, the placement of where I put my paper anytime, but you can, you can use any surface of it. So you get this foam pad when you use the photopolymer stamp. So those are those really clear ones. It gives them just a little extra cushion and it raises this up um, for the plate to hit. Um, the red rubber stamps, which I don't have, the cling stamps are a little thicker, so you don't need this. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to use, which is an add-on, an extra, and, um, and you don't need it for here, but it's nice. So now when I cover it up, you don't see the gridded paper. They do sell gridded paper. And I'll show you as we do this why this is helpful. A couple reasons. Um, you can certainly just cut your own paper, but it's nice that it's all gridded and it's all the same. All right, so I'm gonna put my magnets down, just to hold this paper down. Sometimes you hold down the paper that you're working on, but I'm gonna do it a little differently. These um, have hinges, or and they, they fit right in there so you can move it, and they, they work on both sides, top and bottom. So I think we're just gonna use one on the side. I also, when I'm using my Stamparatus, like to um, put my case underneath it. It raises it exactly level um, and it makes it, now it's a solid surface when I ink it. So before, you know, it's still solid, but it's on an angle. So I just, I just think that's the perfect height. Alrighty. So I already cut my paper. Um, the card base is a standard card base, eight and a half by five and a half scored in the middle on the four and a quarter. Um, I have a gorgeous grape um, background here and it's a thin background and so I cut that at five and an eighth by three and seven eighths and then my white what I'm going to stamp on is five by three and three quarter. All right so I already look at this this is I haven't even made my uh, swaps yet so I'm gonna start I only made my one sample. So he, this is the five by three and three quarter. I'm going to put it right here right along these lines so I know it's straight. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter if it's straight, but for what I'm doing, it does. And for also what I'm doing, and I'm gonna, as I show you, I wanna know exactly where my paper is going because I'm going to be moving papers around for making multiple cards, which you'll see in a second. Um, and that's also why, 
so that's why I put the washi tape here. Um, so I know when I'm not using that part, I just put my paper right here. So it's always in the same spot. But you can find your own spot, how you like to use it. So I'm going to put it right there, and I'm going to grab my stamp. And so what's also nice about this grid of paper, for this card especially, is this um, st stripes are almost an inch wide, so it actually helps you position where you want them. So I just want to make sure, I want to raise it up just a smidge. All right, so you only have to position the stamp once. I don't want to put my head in the camera. All right, so that looks like it's pretty straight. So then you close. So I'm actually going to put the mega on that for a minute. For some reason, the first time you, as you position, I find anyways, the photopolymer stamps, it really sticks to see how the paper lifts up. It really sticks to the paper. But as you are stamping, when it has the ink on there, it doesn't really do that. So sometimes you have to reposition your paper. All right, so I have my stamp on the plate. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm gonna. St I'm actually gonna stamp it in this direction. So I'm gonna take my. This is Magenta Madness, one of the new colors, and just stamp it or ink it rather, and then I'm going to close. And then I'm just going to push down and lift up. It's going to lift up my paper because I didn't. Okay. So let's see if I can, because I have there, it's, I don't know if you can see there's a little link there. I didn't push on all of it. So one way of preventing the paper from lifting, remember I said the put, you can put a little bit of tape on there, and so then it won't really lift up. You could put the magnet on it. Um, I didn't put the magnet on it. Well, I guess I could have actually. Um, we're going to. I want to show you two things. So I'm doing multiple cards. So I'm going to take this off and put them this one down. I will put the magnet on it this time. Um, and I'm going to ink it and press down. There we go. And then to make multiple cards, do you see how easy and quick this is? Because, because I know I'm putting it in the same spot, it's going exactly where I want it to go. Okay, so I could keep going with my pile, but I'll stop. So I'm going to put that back where it belongs. Just put the magnet on there. So now I'm going to clean it because I want to do the next color, which is uh, Mango Melody. This is a simple, I think it's called Simply Chamois. I just put them in, um, you can, if you have an extra, it's the same case. If you have extra cases or you can buy them in packs of four and then it just fits perfectly in there. And it looks kind of gross but I just cleaned it. And so all you do is run it through um, just running water and squeeze it till the ink runs clear, even though it's stained. And then that's clean. And if you want to be sure it's clean, if you're not sure, you can always put another piece of paper. The pinks and the reds always sting your stamps. Um, but see how it, you know, it's pretty clean. All right, so I'll close this. The hinge technique and this is what's unique to this Stamparatus versus other stamping positioning tools is I can take this off and put, put it down one hinge layer. And then I'm going to take the mango, move that up, close that, like that. And then again, if I'm doing multiple cards, I can move that over, put that in the same spot, you know where it's going, ink it. So just imagine as you're making, you know, the occasions for making multiple cards are usually Christmas, or if you have to make a whole bunch of birthdays. Um, this technique, I'll do one more. Um, 
really um, is a time efficiency, but it's also an exact placement tool. So it's really kind of cool. All right. You also see I have ink here, but it didn't get on the paper. So that's another great thing. All right, well, I'll leave that there. I'm gonna wash this off. Now I'll just finish this one. I won't do the multiples. And my next color is Granny Apple Green. I'll put a post on my blog, say what colors I used and everything. Um, I'm actually gonna make sure, cause that didn't really look like I washed it off good. Yep, I did. It's because of the, um, the staining. Oop, look at, see, I didn't hinge it down. So hinge down. There we go. And now I'll move my magnet up there. Wash it off. Hinge it down. And my next color is Coastal Cabana. messy with that one but that's okay because it won't come off okay and my last one is Highland Heather um, so you can see you have possibilities the cool thing is sometimes when you have words and then you can do like thank you thank you thank you thank you or happy birthday or whatever um, you have to play with a little bit because each stamp has a different width and so you'll the the distance between the stamps will vary depending on how wide the stamps are so a wider stamp they would be a little closer together if some wide wide stamps it they'll be they'll be overlapping um, so you have to play a little bit to know which ones work but this one i think is perfect all right so there we go so now you have your stripes so I don't get it on me. All right. And the other cool thing, there's a lot of cool things. Um, you can flip this over. So you can actually maybe we'll even do that because we can stamp the inside of the cards. But so you can use two sides of the plates and you have two plates. So you can really do um, different stamping. All right. I'll take that off move that aside for a second so you can see I could have um, as I was aligning it I could have made it go up a little bit more but I wanted to show you um, how it worked within those grid lines so I could let's see, I could leave it like that this one I trimmed slightly yeah I'm just gonna trim it ever so slightly so it's up to you um, but just so I don't have as much of a, a, a white border on this side. So it looks a little bit more symmetrical, at least to me. All right. So I'll finish those later. So that was that. And then this is, I put a card base of Purple Posy. And then this is the Gorgeous Grape. So I'm going to use the new stamp and seal. Get the part I missed, which is very strong. All right. So the way I cut it, it's not exact. Oh, I didn't put it on straight. Um, I made it so it was an eighth of an inch border because I wanted it thin and because I trimmed one little side I'm just gonna make this a little closer so I can see it it's not exactly the same border on all four sides there we go so it's a little bit wider on the sides but that's okay I find if I do that little flick it breaks it um, the adhesive off and then you don't have to keep winding it back all right so that's that so now we're going to do our letters which is I wanted to show you so I have I did it in silver foil 
And these are the foam adhesive sheets. You get a whole bunch of them. Two, four, six, six or seven sheets. Um, so I'm just gonna, I've already used some of it. I'm just gonna use little bits. Um, just grabbing my letters, moving things. I need a big workspace. All right. So I have my happy right here. And I'm going to use my big shot, but soon I'll be able to use my new stamping cut machine. As a demonstrator, I can order mine next week. I'm very excited. And customers, you guys can order your, if you're gonna get a new stamp and cut machine, you can order it September 1st, I believe. Oh, I forgot to do something. All right, so I cut my foil because um, I have limited foil left, so I made it as small as possible, and I know that the letters are gonna fit on here. So then I'm going to just line it up and cut the foam sheet the same size. with scissors and you can see it's like that thick so maybe it's an eighth of an inch and it has two peel back layers I'm just gonna peel one of them off and I'm gonna stick that right on there so whatever color cardstock you want to cut out you stick that right on there there we go all right so now we'll use our big shot or whatever die cutting machine and I'm, let's see if I can remember how I place these letters on here. I think I did the P's. Really, I was, I had very limited foil paper. Actually, I have very little white paper left too. I need to put an order in. All right. Because it doesn't matter what order you put these guys in because they you just want separate letters. All right, I think they're all on there. My magnet plate's making them jump around. The new magnet plate won't do this. So that's why I'm excited. It won't, because this one has like 40 different magnets throughout. For the new machine, it's the magnet is like a one piece, so there'll be no more jumping. All right. Come on, guys. Look at them, they're jumping all over the place. They don't know they're on camera. And I'm trying to do this. Now I could take, I don't think I have the other piece. Oh, I do. Let's get rid of the magnet plate. I'm lazy and I always use it. So this is the platform it actually comes with. These guys shouldn't jump. But now my, my fingers are sticky and they're sticking to me. Come on. Normally I'd cut them out ahead of time, which I did with another piece, but I wanted you to see how they cut with a foam. So I hope you're laughing. All right. They're all on there. They're all on there. Then you just Put your foam, and I'm just gonna kind of put my thumb down and make sure it doesn't move because it's thicker. And you just run it through. Oh, I think I need the other piece. Okay, we need one more piece. I forgot. I haven't used this. I haven't used this platform in a long time. I usually use, like I said, the magnet plate. All right, I forgot. You need the two pieces. There we go, that should work much better. And they moved. What took, should have taken three seconds. Okay. Now, had I cut a bigger piece, that wouldn't have been an issue either, but like I said, Okay, so what 
I'm gonna keep rolling. You guys laugh, right? I know you like it when I make mistakes. H-A-P, lost a P. Where did it go? There it is. All right. The reason why that didn't scoot through before, and that may, may have happened to you before, I didn't have this all the way to the edge, and so it had nothing to grab onto. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna run it through once, but just to be certain they cut, I'm just going back. Anyone who comes to my classes know that I knock things over all the time. Okay. And I think there's a piece stuck somewhere, but that's okay. So then these just pop out. Right? Super easy. Once you can get them cut. Okay, oh, that one I didn't have the backing. Let's put the backing back on so it doesn't stick somewhere where it shouldn't. Okay, so those are my letters. I don't need these guys. The middles. Okay. And then what we need to do is my sample. I already cut out, see, I usually do just cutting out a, rec a stitched rectangle, and that's from, I did use three sets of dies for this card, but I'm gonna show you a workaround. Um, the Tasteful, oh no, that's the wrong one. The rec stitched rectangle thinlets, I used this one. But if you don't have it, you can just cut a rectangle. So that measurement is three and a quarter by one and a quarter. And then same with these little guys. I used this piece, which I use all the time. And that comes from the Tasteful Labels. You can certainly just cut rectangles and, and um, cut them with scissors. But what I did is I did pre-cut these two. And then you can just cut them in half. And so then if you're making more than one card, you have two or if you don't have a whole lot of paper, like I have very limited paper of this, so I just cut halves to kind of conserve my paper. That's if I'm making more than one, but um, if you're only making one and you need to conserve paper, just cut the size you need. All right. And a little tip is this is a silicon mat, which is great when you're using glue. Just stuck a little glue there. I'm going to line up, I want this in the middle. So kind of in between those whites, but I'm just going to shift it up, but stay in the same um, placement this way where I want it, because I'm just gonna copy what I did the order. Um, I'm just going to take a little glue, just kind of let it on there and know, so now I know the width, so, um, I can kind of place them and then I'll place, I'll move that down. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm not really having them go straight on purpose. You do have a few seconds 
if you need to shift them with the glue, you need to change their placements. So when I scoot that back down, it's going to look like that. So that's good. Alrighty, so now we'll just put our letters down. So the, there's a backing that just peels right off. I'm going to use tweezers just to help me with my placement. And I've already kind of played with the placement, so I know like the H goes fairly close to the edge. Tweezers help because sometimes your fingers are in the way to see if it's in line in alignment. Of fun having them raised up. I certainly could have just done them flat and glued them down, but I do like how they're kind of popped up. All right, so now I'll just use some dimensionals on the back. Okay, happy. And then what I did on the inside is, I'm just gonna move this over. When I cut out all these little pendants of the colors, I noticed on the alphabet dies, there's this one. It has two little circles. And I think if I, remembering my math, I might have to do with division or I don't know, I have to ask my daughter. She's a math person. Um, so anyways, there's two dots. So when I cut these out, I used that one as well and I got the dots. So I already used one of them. Um, so it just looks like confetti. Unless we need to stamp inside. So let's move that so I don't get glue everywhere. So that, you can just, oh. And just peel it off. I didn't actually need to do that because I have other ones to do, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to put maggots down here because I don't want that to move. That's all bumpy because it already has the things on it, and the stamps are right here. Just want to see how you know other ways of using the stamp apparatus. So I want that to go. Looks good. And I'm gonna on this one I'm gonna use the darker purple, the gorgeous grape to kind of match that border we had. Cue the confetti. So some people use this stamparatus instead of any blocks at all. So that is another option. Um, Really, because it really does take place of blocks and it does a whole lot more. All right, so I'm just going to, I use the same little pot of glue I had. I'm going to use tweezers, just kind of dip just a tiny bit. And I'm just going to randomly, because that's what confetti does, random. Oops. So someone in the team is getting this particular card, and I'm going to finish up the other ones. Okay, so there we go. So mistakes and all, <laughs> here is a fun, happy, cue the confetti 
baby birthday congratulations card. I just love the fun colors. So I hope you liked it. I hope you liked watching the Stamparatus in action as well as the foam sheets with um, the big with the um, the die cutting. Thank you very much for watching. I will put these details on my blog um, if you need them at mailsomethingpretty.com. Have a great day. Bye-bye.